Violet's Music by Angela Johnson When Violet was a baby, just a few hours old, she banged her rattle against the crib, hoping others in the nursery would join in. Boom, shake, beat, shake. All day long, Violet played that rattle. Could she find other babies to play along? No, she couldn't, but she'd keep looking. Violet played her music all alone. On Violet's second birthday, Aunt Bertha brought gifts and a box full of paper, crayons, glitter, and glue to make horns that would wail. Violet tooted from morning till that night, wah, woo, woo, all day long. She tried to get everyone to toot with her all day. Wah, woo, woo. Oh, yeah. Violet blew that horn. Could she get her family to play with her? No, she couldn't. But she'd keep on looking. Violet blew her horn all alone. Violet wondered in kindergarten if there were other kids like her who dreamed music thought music all day long. But she found that some liked to paint, some liked to paste, others liked to play in the sandbox, and still others just liked to stand around eating paste. No one wanted to play music all day long. One day at the beach, Violet played with a badminton racket, a pretend guitar, hoping someone would join in. Plink, plink, pluck, pluck. Violet played guitar. Could she find a fellow guitarist buried in the sand? No, she couldn't, but she'd keep looking. Violet played her guitar all alone. With Violet, you see, it was music all the time. Breakfast time. Dinner time. Bath time and all times in between. Whenever she walked down the street, or hid behind the market's vegetable bins, or sat on the fire escape, Violet was always looking for kids like her. Could she find them at the zoo? Nope. At the museum? Too quiet. And forget about the dentist. But she'd keep looking. Violet and her music, always looking. Until, one day, a few summers later, Violet was playing her guitar, a real one now, in the park. Twang, twang, yeah, yeah. Twang, twang, yeah. When over by the fountain, someone started beating a drum. Then, behind the jungle gym, a saxophone blew real smooth. And over beside the flower garden, someone started to sing. Now Angel, Randy, and Juan are in Violet's band. And if you ask any of them whether they thought they'd find each other, they'll say, Oh yeah, we did. We knew we would. Because when we were in the nursery, then we're two, and later in kindergarten and at the beach, we kept on looking for kids playing music too. Shake, twang, plink, pluck, wah, woo, yeah. Violet was a born musician, ready to share her music with the world. But when people didn't understand her interests, she didn't let that stop her. She kept practicing and growing until she found others who were doing the same. What about you? Have you ever wanted to join a band? Let's make our own musical instruments. We'll start with the simplest one, the drum. Take a balloon and cut off the tube part near the top. You just want the big round part at the bottom. Then very carefully stretch it over the mouth of an empty container. You could use a plastic cup, an empty plastic jar, or even a can. 
test out your drum and see how it sounds. You can play this drum by hand or grab a couple of pencils to create drumsticks. Now you know how to build a drum. But do you know why the drum makes sound when you hit it? To show you how sound works, let's build another instrument, a rubber band guitar. Grab any pot or Tupperware, but one with a handle works really well. Then take a binder clip and clip it on the opposite side to the handle. This method creates a two-string rubber band guitar, but if you don't have a pot or a binder clip, you can make a one-string guitar just by taking the rubber band and stretching it all the way over the opening of a small container. Fold the inside arm of the binder clip down and leave the outside arm facing up. Then take a rubber band and stretch it all the way from the binder clip to the end of the pot handle. And here is our two-string rubber band guitar. Test it out! Notice what happens when you pluck the rubber band. Can you see it vibrating? When you pull the rubber band, it stretches, and when you let go, it releases, snapping back to its original shape, and it vibrates a little bit when it does this. You can also change the frequency of the vibrations by pulling the rubber band tighter or looser before you pluck it. The frequency of the vibrations is what makes the sound higher or lower. This is called pitch. The vibrations of the rubber band are a great picture of what sound really looks like. And it's not just the rubber band that's vibrating. The rubber band's vibrations actually create vibrations in the air. We call them sound waves. Let's build our next instrument to see what sound waves look like. Grab some plastic eggs and some beans. If you don't have beans, you can also use rice. Add a tiny scoop of beans or rice to each plastic egg. You might be wondering, what do beans have to do with sound? Well, air is made up of particles and molecules. You can think of them like beans, suspended in space. Imagine that the pencil is your guitar string. When you pluck the string, it moves back and forth, pushing on the air molecules and compressing them together. The energy from the string is transferred into the air molecules, causing them to bump into each other. The vibrations cause the particles to clump up together in areas of high, dense pressure. The pattern of high pressure and low pressure areas form the sound waves. Let's turn these eggs into maracas. You'll need some spoons. Grab an egg and rest it between two spoons. Hold the spoons at the stems and wrap around a rubber band. You can add a piece of tape around the stems just to keep your maraca together. Repeat the same steps on the other egg and your maracas will be ready to go. Give it a shake. Imagine the beans getting shaken back and forth in the egg, just like the particles getting shaken back and forth through the air. But what about wind instruments? How do they create vibrations? Let's create a straw saxophone and find out. You'll need two bendy straws for this. Take the first straw and flatten out the part of the straw above the bendy part. You can use a ruler to press it flat, or take the flat part of some scissors and pinch them against the straw using your thumb to crimp it. Try to get that top section as flat as possible. We're going to cut this flat section into a mouthpiece. Trim the corners off so it makes an angle. You may find that it won't work and make sound right away. Keep adjusting the angle of the pointed mouthpiece little by little until you find just the right shape. Now take your other straw and cut a slit in the top part of the long side of the straw. 
pinch the slitted end to narrow it and slide it into the long end of the other straw. Give it a test. How does it sound different now? When you blow into a wind instrument, like a straw saxophone, your breath creates the sound waves. And the shape and length of the instrument helps to shape the sound waves into higher or lower pitches. Tape the place where the two straws join to make sure that no air can escape here. We want all of the air to travel all the way to the end of the saxophone. You can play your saxophone just like it is if you only want one pitch. But if you'd like to change the pitch, you can use some scissors to add holes to the bottom straw. Look at where your fingers rest comfortably on the bottom straw. We'll add a hole underneath your bottom finger and your top finger. Use the scissors to cut a very tiny notch in the straw. Go in at one angle, and then add another to create the notch. If you don't like your notches, and they don't create the pitch that you wanted, you can tape over them and cut a notch in a different spot. Test it as you go until you're happy with it. The holes in the saxophone give the air a shorter path to escape than traveling all the way down to the end of the straw. This causes the pitch to change. Now that you know all about sound waves and how sounds are made, put all your instruments together and see what you can come up with. Have fun! For more information about receiving STEAM kits, visit the Kids and Families page at coosbaylibrary.org.